My name is Stephen Sindoni. Thank you for tuning into the broadcast of Reincarnation, Myth or Fact. In today's program, we will discuss reincarnation. I like to begin with the most accepted definition. Reincarnation is believed to occur when the soul or spirit, after the death of the body, comes back to earth in a newborn body. This phenomenon is also known as transmigration of the soul. The word reincarnation derives from Latin literally meaning entering the flesh again or being born again. The origin of the notion of reincarnation are obscure. Discussions of the subject appears in the philosophical traditions of India and Greece in the first millennium. This doctrine is a central tenet within the majority of Indian religious traditions such as Hinduism, Junism, Sikhism, and Buddhism. The idea was also fundamental to some Greek philosophers and religions as well as other religious groups such as Judaism. Reincarnation can also be found in many small-scale societies around the world in places such as Siberia, West Africa, North America, and Australia. Some scholars such as Michael Cremo have argued that the Indian reincarnationalist worldview may have originated in the pre-Aryan non-Vedic culture, while others trace links between Druid, ancient Greek, and Vedic philosophy and religion and suggest reincarnation was present in Proto-Indo-European religion. Equally early has found the claim of the possibility of first-hand experience. Several ancient sources affirm that Pythagoras claimed he could remember his past lives. Plato taught this, all learning is but recollection because we have innate knowledge of universal ideas and we need only recall our buried memories. The early Tibetan Buddhist texts discuss techniques for recalling previous births predicated on the development of high levels of meditative concentration. These techniques can be found in the Tibetan Book of the Dead. The Hasidic Orthodox also believe to know the past lives of each person through his semi-prophetic abilities. While reincarnation has been a matter of faith in some communities from an early date, it has also been frequently argued for on principle. Individuals such as Plato and Ben Franklin were believers in it. During the Renaissance, translations of Plato, the Hermetica, and other works fostered new European interest in reincarnation. There were some such as Marsilio Ficino who argued that Plato's references to reincarnation were intended allegorically. Even playwright William Shakespeare made fun of reincarnation. But for some, this belief of reincarnation was no laughing matter. Giordano Bruno was burned at the stake by the Inquisition for his teachings of reincarnation. By the early 20th century, interest in reincarnation had been introduced into psychology, largely due to the influence of William James, who raised aspects of the philosophy of mind, comparative religion, the psychology of religious experience, and the nature of empiricism. At around this time, popular awareness of the idea of reincarnation was boosted by the Theosophical Society's dissemination of systemized and universalized Indian concepts, and also by the influence of magical societies like the Golden Dawn. By 1924, the subject could be satirized in popular children's books. Theodore Flournoy was among the first to study a claim of past life recall in the course of his investigation of the medium Helene Smith, published in 1900, in which he defined the possibility of cryptonesia in such accounts. In the latter part of the 20th century, Ian Stevenson, a psychiatrist parapsychologist at the University of Virginia, gained a level of prominence for publishing more than 2,500 case studies from around the world of children that seemed to be able to remember events in a life that had ended after a violent way before the child was born. Stevenson believed that the best evidence for reincarnation was the existence of birthmarks and congenital deformities on children, which he reported corresponded to fatal wounds of the deceased. Today's recent studies have indicated that some Westerners accept the idea of reincarnation. In Russia, over 30% of the population believe in reincarnation. Overall, 22% of respondents in Western Europe believe in reincarnation. According to a 2005 Gallup poll, 20% of the United States adults believe in reincarnation. Reincarnation, is it myth or fiction? In the first century, Alexander Cornelius Polyhistor wrote, 
The Pythagorean doctrine prevails among the Gauls' teachings that the souls of men are immortal and that after a fixed number of years they will enter into another body. In part two of reincarnation, myth or fact, I will share with you my own personal story of reincarnation. In December of 2007, I was looking for a screenplay to write when I came across a story on the internet regarding the legend of J.C. Brown. After reading the story, I became fascinated by it and decided to spend two weeks at the New York Public Library to investigate the legend. The legend of J.C. Brown is a baffling story about a man by the name of J.C. Brown who in 1934 at the age of 67 appears in Stockton, California. The old timer spins a tale about a lost treasure he found 30 years earlier in 1904 while employed with the Lord Cowjay Mining Company of England. Eighty eager Stockton residents, including a newspaper editor, a museum curator, a retired printer, several scientists, and other solid citizens, form a group and plan for six weeks to investigate the tunnel with J.C. Brown. The group would leave on June 19th at 1 p.m. Eighty Stockton citizens waited at the designated time for their leader to appear. The Stockton police were called in, but no trace of the man was found. He had completely disappeared. But the 80 people who waited in vain for him that June day believed the authenticity of his story and they believed in the existence of the vast tunnel of Mount Shasta filled with golden artifacts. I then jotted down the clues I had learned by reading the legend and tried to discover the true identity of the man only known as J.C. Brown. Just like when a detective takes on a case, he seeks to discover evidence to bring the guilty to justice, I was about to look at the facts and make my own conclusions. When I got to the library, I slowly walked over to a terminal and went on the computer and I decided to do a Google search on the name Lord Cowdrey and see if there was actually a man named Lord Cowdrey who was the owner of the Lord Cowdrey Mining Company of England. What I quickly discovered from doing a Google search, yes, there was a man by the name of Lord Cowdrey who was knighted in 1917, where he became officially known as the first Viscount Cowdrey. His given name was Wheatman Dickinson Pearson, and he was born July 15, 1856, at Shelley Woodhouse, Yorkshire, the son of George Pearson and Sarah Wheatman Pearson. He was an engineer, oil industrialist, and owner of the Pearson conglomerate. This was the most important clue that I would need to put all the puzzle pieces into place. After making the connection that Sir Wheatman Pearson was also Lord Cowdrey, I was able to acquire his biography from the New York Public Library. Upon learning of his death in May of 1927, I turned my attention to someone who may have been a lieutenant in his organization. It was then that I learned that just as the man had claimed he had spent many years in the employ of the Lord Cowdrey Mining Company of England, I was able to use this information to link John Benjamin Body, being the man who appeared in the office of the editor of the Stock and Record newspaper, in 1934, claiming to be J.C. Brown. J.B. Body, alias J.C. Brown, did in fact work for the Lord Cowdrey Mining Company of England. The man was also a geologist by trade and working his entire career for the same company. And just as J.C. Brown had claimed that was reported by the Stockton Record, his net worth exceeded $40 million. Then in February of 2008, I contacted columnist Michael Fitzgerald of the Stockton Record and shared these findings. I was able to provide the columnist with accurate information without having a copy of the original newspaper article published in the Stockton Record on June 19, 1934, regarding the disappearance of J.C. Brown. I even contacted the Stockton Police Department and wanted to solve the missing persons report, but the case had been closed for over 70 years. Then two months later in April of 2008, I was a guest on Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie to discuss my findings on the legend of J.C. Brown. As luck would have it, I was able to acquire a biography of the life of Sir Wheatman Pearson, Sir Lord Cowdrey, and in the book I was able to get a photo of the man by the name of John Benjamin Body, who I believed was the man who showed up in 1934 posing as J.C. Brown in Stockton, California. 
Interestingly enough, when I showed this photo around to friends and family, they told me that the man looked a lot like me. For nearly a year, I had gone over all of the clues. It was my theory that Lord Cowdery and J.B. Body, alias J.C. Brown, stumbled upon the basalt volcanic rock formation by accident while vacationing at the Shasta Springs Resort in Dunsmere, California. The Shasta Springs Resort was located three and a half miles north of Dunsmere, California. Shasta Springs at the time was the most famous resort located in the upper Sacramento River Canyon. Trains would stop there so passengers could drink the natural spring water. The drinking of Shasta water reported to have beneficial results and was used as a remedial agent. Some of the passengers would disembark on the platforms and head for the incline railways, which for five cents would take them up to the main part of the resort that was situated high above the railroad tracks. It was my belief that Lord Cowdery and J.B. Body were vacationing at the resort, and while walking out or near the property, they noticed an unusual rock formation. Lord Cowdery and J.B. Body, geologists by trade, considered this to be an important discovery. They both agreed that they would later return to dig out the tunnel. I then compiled all the information and chronological history on the Shasta Springs Resort. And after compiling the information, I looked at a map and a picture of the property, and I felt as though it was deja vu that I had been there before. Then in April of 2009, I decided to go to Mount Shasta and search for the tunnel. Armed with the new information in the map, I began hiking and exploring the area that surrounded where the Shasta Springs Resort was once located. It was on the second day exploring that I came across the strange-looking basalt volcanic rock formation that J.C. Brown had claimed that he had found many years earlier. From the location of this unusual rock formation, it was approximately 11 miles from the base of Mount Shasta, just as J.C. Brown had claimed in his legend. As a direct result of the legend of J.C. Brown, I now am a strong believer in reincarnation. I have come to the full understanding that we have many lifetimes and existences in other bodies and we alone are the pattern maker of our own existence. Eastern philosophies teach that the purpose of human existence is mergence with the divine. To be merged with the divine will be to become godlike. Is life on earth a temporary but very important stage of our existence? Is it a prelude to an endless and uninterrupted life in the spiritual world? which is our real home? It is my belief that during our short stay on earth that our personality is established and our character is formed. The inner character formed in this world is what develops forever in the afterlife. While we are living in this world, the foundations of our eternal existence are being laid. Life on earth is a very important phase of our endless existence. It is my belief heaven and hell are right here on earth. It is while we are alive in this world, we are forming our future heaven or hell for ourselves based on our actions. If we have goodness for one another in our hearts, then we have heaven inside of us. If we are dominated by thoughts of selfishness, then we have hell inside of us. The choice for me was plain and simple. Treat all of God's children, whatever race, creed, or color, as your equal. I have reached the crossroads of my life and need only to listen to the voice within to receive the answers. Reincarnation, myth or fact? It depends on who you ask. Thank you for tuning in to Reincarnation, Myth or Fact, Part 2.